everyone. I wanted to make this video because um, we've recently seen the news that the new Mars rover has landed early this month on August the 6th, um, 2012. And we had this uh, wonderful picture which was taken here from the high-rise camera um, on the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter and it actually took a picture of the Curiosity rover landing and it's it's a pretty extraordinary picture and you can go and check this out at uh, this URL and uh, I'll certainly give credit to NASA for that sort of achievement because it's, uh, it's pretty extraordinary um, so I have a little story there about that and that is that is pretty amazing um, but I wanted to make this video because of the attention that's been focused on Curiosity to draw attention to some false information which has been put out on a documentary. Now, a few days ago I was looking at a documentary from 2009 broadcast by the BBC in the UK. It's called Mars Horizon Guide. And uh, when I watched this documentary, and I'll play a clip in a moment, I found that it... Um, was replaying much of earlier documentaries and I found that uh, the original mistake was repeated so I'll play the clip now and there's the first here, piece of information coming in oh oh say something Bill. yeah I'm supposed to say something at this point <laughs> I'm just I Except just I just don't feel like talking uh, <laughs> Well, there are rocks. But there are rocks, yes. yes. There's rocks and uh, there's sediment, but it's just, oh, it's just incredible to, to see that the Mars, you know, is really there. Um, instant interpretation is always a little bit hazardous. Nonetheless, many of these boulders do look very similar to ones that we've seen in uh, desert terrains here. Some of these boulders may be vesicular, that is, basaltic uh, rocks possibly volcanic rocks that have solidified in a gas charged environment and the these gases produce vesicles or holes just looks like a perfect set down the first picture of the martian panorama as you look at the field of view in general i think the most striking impression is one of a lot of rocks and this automatically brings to mind the fact that we had a good deal of luck because some of these rocks are about two three meters across and had the spacecraft landed on those rocks it would have been disabled probably permanently disabled later high resolution pictures confirmed the rocks were volcanic but lying on dunes of fine sand on the second day the first pictures in color Mars was indeed the red planet, or at any rate, blue-red. But the colors were false. It was noticed that one of the cables on the spacecraft wasn't orange enough. The color was corrected, and Mars turned even redder. The reason for their mistake? The sky. Everyone had assumed it would be blue, like on Earth. But on Mars, scattered dust turns the sky pink and makes sunsets purple. So that clip was actually from this documentary, Mars Horizon Guide. However, after a little bit of research, I found that the clip in question was from an earlier documentary by the BBC called The Red Planet, which was actually, according to this information here, broadcast for the first time on Friday 4th of March 1977 and the problem is that in that documentary clip you will have heard that they stated that they noticed a cable on the Viking lander was the wrong colour and they adjusted the image coming from the probe to change that cable to be the right colour now um, this is clearly ridiculous because if we go and look at this document here, um, which is called 
Color cal Calibration of the Martian Images by Ron L. Levin of Lockheed Martin, um, you will see that they did not use cables on the lander to determine the correct colors of the components of the image that they were seeing. I'm going to scroll down this document. It's actually to page 8, as you'll see down here. I keep going down and go past the graphs. Now, Ron Levin, I, I don't know whether he's related to Gilbert Levin. I'm guessing he is, because Gilbert Levin uh, devised the labeled release experiment, which determined that there were microbes metabolizing the uh, soil on Mars. Now, that's a separate story which you can go and read up and I've written about before, but you see here we have a color chart, Earth reference from Flight Spare Viking Lander. So we actually have a reference chart. Now, if you go down a bit here, you'll see, oh look, and if I uh, zoom in here, you'll see that this reference chart is here on the lander. So they can see it in the images. So they don't judge the image from a cable, as in this cable here, say, they use these colour reference charts because that's what they're for. So here will be an example of the BBC participating in a cover-up because the sky on Mars is blue. And it even says that everyone assumed it would, blue, it was blue, it would be blue. If you listen to that clip, they even say everyone assumed that it would be blue. The reason for their mistake? The sky. Everyone had assumed it would be blue, like on Earth. But on Mars, scattered dust turns the sky pink and makes sunsets purple. But of course, again, you see, you go onto this page and uh, you find that uh, we're not really being given the full story because this is one of the latest images from the lander. So you'll notice here that if we go onto this page, we have, oh look, black and white images. Mission images. Curiosity's first track on Mars. Oh look, black and white. No colour. We have this two billion dollar machine and they are still showing us black and white images. Here we go, look at all these black and white images. What on earth is going on? Why is nobody asking these questions? Well, I know the answer. That they're covering up what's really on Mars and what they found. And if you want to find out about that, you can either look at some of the other videos that I've made or you can look at some of the other websites which have also studied this and found that NASA is hiding data and covering things up. So I'll leave you with those thoughts and thank you very much for watching this short video. Thank <music> you.